All right, uh, let's discuss uh, what sort of difference can Operation Vala Zonke make. Uh, we're joined now by Professor Mohamed Mustafa, who is Head of Civil Engineering at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. We're also joined by Gundo Maswime, who is a lecturer in the University of Cape Town Civil Engineering Department. Thank you, uh, both gentlemen, for, for joining me. Uh, let me start with you, Professor. So Sunwell has admitted that a lot of this is about a lack of preventative maintenance. Um, how did we get here when the estimates are I think 200 billion rand to sort of deal with the backlog in terms of maintenance yeah good evening to you and to the viewers in fact uh, the estimate is about 200 billion rand by the Department of Transport while some other independent studies estimate 400 billion rand so uh, uh, basically we, we don't know exactly how much we need because we don't have accurate, uh, comprehensive data about the current condition of each and single road in the country. How did you arrive there? Uh, uh, the, the simple answer is budget for maintenance was, was used for uh, different purposes all the time, uh, uh, reduced all the time, uh, mismanagement sometimes, so mismanaged sometimes, so basically, uh, there are several factors related to uh, lack of maintenance. And, and, and lack of maintenance is the key word for uh, failure in roads. So in, in, in the bottom line in, in this situation is to start now and start effectively. Mm. Uh, Mr. Maswime, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the estimates are that 80% of national roads have sort of passed their sell-by date. Um, so, so outline some of the implications of that as well. Uh, yes, the truth is that you cannot use all that money um, to fix all the roads uh, because you won't have all at once. So there has to be a prioritization exercise. So which then says the idea of calling it portal maintenance uh, as opposed to upgrading or maintenance of road infrastructure uh, becomes problematic because by the time you have portals, there are other stages of deterioration that a road goes into. It's when you have really left it last that you now have to really dig up uh, the, whole, the whole road. So the various roads are in different stages of deterioration. Uh, it then means we must prioritize which roads are the most important, which roads are at the uh, worst state of uh, disrepair. But to go on a, a, a portal a crusade like this, which we saw in uh, 2011, which was called Siamba Song, exactly the same uh, thing was done. And then now about uh, 11, 12 years down the line, uh, we are going through uh, the same process. But maintenance is a gradual, persist, uh, a consistent process that must be followed through. Then it becomes much cheaper. So it doesn't mean you're, you're not very excited about this announcement around um, Operation Vala Zonke? Uh, my lack of excitement is in uh, thinking what will be done now that was not uh, being done uh, last week. Is it? Uh, that suddenly all the resources, uh, all the workers will all be brought together, but it's the same employees that have been working on the roads uh, every day. So I don't really think there will be a, a, a big difference. Or have they now dedicated more budget than they are supposed to? Uh, you know, so, so that is the other thing. What we appreciate is to see the mayor working with the Minister of Transport, because some roads are local roads, others are provincial, others are national roads. The challenge has been that with most uh, municipal roads, that's where the maintenance has been uh, really, really uh, lacking. Some provincial roads is only in specific uh, uh, provinces where there's been uh, challenges. So I think the only good thing is to see the synergy between gov gov uh, the various uh, spheres of government, which is what the district yeah. development model is about. So that is commendable. Professor Mustafa, what do you think, before we get into the budget, does it make a difference that the Minister of Transport is showing political will and saying, we will do this, we will push for budget, we will close all the potholes? Uh, I see that, you know, this political will is very important, but uh, he is talking about potholes only, and he is talking about 11 billion rand available. 
uh, we said we need at least 200 billion, if not double that amount. <clears throat> and potholes are not the only problem uh, in our roads. And uh, yes, it affects people uh, uh, directly. Uh, people can identify them easily, but there are other road distresses which are uh, in, uh, in our roads, and they are more dangerous even than potholes and sometimes, and they are not mentioned. <clears throat> and mainly... Professor, no like, program, like what? Can you give uh, us examples? Uh, cracks. Uh, cracks, rutting. Uh, so uh, uh, cracks are not only affecting the uh, comfort of driving, but also they are allowing water to go into our pavement and uh, cause it to uh, fail in a shorter uh, lifespan than it should. Uh, rutting is also another big problem which can be seen in, in different areas and of course it affects the comfort of driving and it affects the suspension of the vehicles and it affects the movement of the goods. So uh, focusing on potholes is yes important but it's not going to solve the uh, backlog problem we have with the maintenance in our roads. Uh, and as I said, the budget is, is very, very critical. We, we can't just say that we will fix the potholes tomorrow. Uh, we need a program which uh, should run uh, on continuous basis for uh, as long as possible. And this program must be a, a, a different level of maintenance which should be added to the routine maintenance which should be taking place on a daily basis. Mr. Maswima, do you agree? I mean, if we look at the figures, so the estimate is that the, the backlog is worth around 200 billion in terms of maintenance. Professor uh, saying that that's a conservative ex estimate, it may be double that. And uh, right now there's only the 11 billion set aside for roads, uh, but the transport department is saying it will be pushing and, and pushing hard for more budget. But, but 11 billion is just a drop in the ocean. Uh, yes, you know, the, the real challenge with the figures, uh, yes, the money will not be enough, and uh, the professor is correct uh, to say that. But if you listened to the mayor of Mfuleni, he made a very important point when he said some departments were not able to spend their budgets. So money can be set aside, but to spend that money is also another issue. So you will find that money has been set aside. But because of the procurement processes that need to be followed and just the general uh, administrative um, uh, processes that must be followed, that money will have to go back to the treasury uh, without being used. So as far as I'm concerned, once the municipalities, the province and the National uh, Department of Roads uh, uh, is able to spend uh, what has been allocated to them, the money must then be increased based on what has been spent. Uh, to allocate a lot of funds, there are other competing needs that you allocate a lot of funds, but the money still goes back uh, into the, the national fiscals and uh, are used. So that is a challenge. So emphasizing the amount might just not be sufficient. Professor, in uh, what, what about the reporting app? And I think Johannesburg has tried this already, but we haven't seen a huge difference. Um, but it does get the public involved, so, so people can report where the potholes are, and you are harnessing sort of the, the eyes of all of South Africa, although you have to act on it as well. But is that a, is that a great idea? Of course, it is a great idea. And in fact, we, we should have this reporting app facility in all uh, municipality services, uh, not only on potholes. Uh, but of course, the app needs to be uh, active, working all the time, and uh, it's a reporting tool. So uh, reporting is just the first step uh, of uh, a, a big, a long process. And uh, as my colleague said, uh, money is not the only thing. We need skills. We need to spend the money wisely. And also we need to think innovative. So currently there is a big problem in, in the road construction that we are still dependent on uh, intensive labor construction methods. And in fact, maintenance is uh, a solution for our needs for intensive labor uh, projects. So construction of roads itself uh, should depend more on technology yes. and maintenance should be our way 
to employ a lot of people uh, to do maintenance within the short period so that we uh, uh, balance between using technology and using the labor intensive uh, methods at the same time. And creating jobs. Mr. Maswima, final question for you. You spoke about those municipal roads and there is this pothole patrol um, that's happening in Johannesburg and the city of Joburg is working with private companies. Um, uh, Discovery, I think Dahl Direct there. So is, is that a great initiative or, or is it really only uh, papering over the, the surface cracks? Well, the initiative itself uh, is a great initiative. But this is what you need to know about road maintenance. The Department of Roads at the city of Johannesburg uh, has got an asset register which must have the list of all the roads they have, the, the status of each and every road. It should not be so much relying on what the community tells them, what is the state of their own roads. There are other technologies where you can even monitor the gradual um, deterioration of roads over time. So the municipality knows which road is in what state. They know where a portal is likely to happen. It's not something that should just be reported only, but we cannot despise the need for reporting because once in a while there are those exceptional circumstances where the road is okay, but for one reason or another, there is a specific portal that develops in one area. So that initiative should be commended, but the most and the first and most important thing is that the, the, the municipality must have uh, a register with roads, knowing the state of each roads and knowing when they are going to make what type of intervention uh, on which road. Uh, yeah. And if they do that timelessly, the need for reliance on the community will be lesser and lesser. All right, thank you very much to both of you. Professor Mohamed Mustafa, Head of Civil Engineering at the University of KwaZulu Natal, and Gundo Maswime, Lecturer at University of Cape Town's Civil Engineering Department.